Spiritual Teaching 245 Love Each Other 1. My spirit is rejoiced because you come in search of me. Why do you remember more on this day beings that have passed to the hereafter, if there are no days or dates for the spirit? Don't be confused with the dead who watch over their dead. You are not dead and neither are those who belong to you in this life as parents, children, siblings, relatives or friends and why not also those who have caused you harm, if they have been purified. 2. You are eager for light and my work truly satisfies that need of your spirit that, as it illuminates, and moves further away from apparent death. 3. Your heart is saddened when you see your brothers cry without hope and without consolation for their dead. Pray for them and work so that you learn to resurrect the dead of this world and of the other world. 4. When humanity has understood the reality of these lessons, it will stop crying over the grave that she keeps some remains, to turn her crying into respect for the places destined for the rest of the body and in prayer for the spirits that inhabit the spiritual valley, a prayer that will be a hug, greeting, kiss, and caress. 5. You are already in the third era and humanity is still delayed spiritually. His ministers, his theologians and spiritual pastors reveal to him very little and sometimes nothing of eternal life. To them I also reveal the mysteries of my arcanum and I say to them, Why are they silent? Why is fear awakening the lethargic spirit of men? 6. You who are listening to me, know how to work out here the evolution and advancement for the future of your spirit, but how many ignore or forget these truths and death surprises them unprepared. 7. I want pure thoughts to be the language with which you communicate with your brothers who dwell in the spiritual, that in that form you understand each other, and in truth your merits and your good works will be beneficial to them, as also the influence of those of my children, their inspirations and their protection towards you, will be a powerful help in your journey so that you arrive united to me. 8. Spiritualize yourselves and you will experience in your life the pleasant presence of these beings. The lullaby of the mother who she left the son on earth, the warmth and the advice of the father who also had to leave. 9. After giving you this lesson, you will understand the judgment of those who take their existence, of those who give death to his brother and those who form. Homicidal wars. Watch and pray for all of them, from Cain to the last murderer, so that his judgment is dimmed. 10. Like black clouds that herald storms, so legions of troubled beings float over you. Pray so that you are not victims of their influences. Pray that this darkness turns into light. 11. Do not get tired of this life, do not deny your sorrows, because you do not know what debt of past stocks you are paying off. 12. Live in harmony and peace within your home and your society, so that you can continue your example to many of your brothers who will be led towards you by beings of light. 13. Rejoice in this third era, because my word has come full of splendor to you. 14. It is an instant of peace for every spirit. The worlds are illuminated by shedding my light on them. They are moments of glory for all beings who are prepared to receive that divine gift that grace has reached your world and in it I have contemplated the dead burying their dead, rendering worship and adoration to the goods of the earth and making material offerings to God through vain ceremonies. 15. The light of my Holy Spirit is shed at this time on all men and through it they will be able to understand what is the pleasing offering to the Lord. The Spirit will know how to prepare itself as an offering that must reach the presence of the Creator when it is detached from its body of that matter that when descending to the earth disintegrates and loses its shape and will be only a small bundle of atoms. There where the end of a human being is, a life begins that men have failed to understand. 16. Men are conservative in their traditions and customs. It is good that they keep a memory indelible of beings who have gone down to the grave and are attracted to the place where they deposited their remains. More if they go deeper into the real meaning of material life, they would see that when that body disintegrates, it returns from atom to atom to the different kingdoms of which it is formed and life continues to unfold. 17. But man throughout the ages, due to his lack of study of the spiritual, has created a chain of fanatical cults of flesh. Try to make material life imperishable and forget the spirit, which is the one that in truth possesses eternal life. How far they are still from understanding spiritual life. 18. 
Now you know that there is no point in bringing offerings to those places, where a tombstone that says death should say disintegration and life, because there is nature in full bloom, there is the earth that is a fertile bosom and an inexhaustible amount of creatures and species. 19. When these lessons are understood, humanity will know how to give the material its place and the divine its place. Then the idolatrous worship of the ancestors will disappear. 20. Man must recognize and love his creator, spirit to spirit. 21. Altars are black crepes and tombs are proof of ignorance and idolatry. I forgive all your faults, but in truth I must wake you up. My teaching will be understood and the time will come when men exchange material offerings for lofty thoughts. 22. Disciples. When you have gone through the ordeal of losing a loved one, it already begins to spring from you a prayer like this. Lord, I know that the one who left this world meets you, who only advanced his journey to ours and that the moment will come when you grant us all to be united in the same abode. There is no tears in our eyes because we know that they are not the dead, rather we who are in this world, that in the spiritual valley is true equality and fraternity, because while those who have already reached the light and fullness, they advance along the path of progress and others who have only a weak spark that illuminates their path, they are helped by the former perfect harmony, help, charity exist among them. 23. So why put in stone your memories of their material existence? Remember them with spirituality so that you do not disturb them and once they have shed all human tendencies, they will return invisibly to you. It will be granted to them that they approach your heart, although you do not know which way. In the spiritual life there is only one aspiration, one desire, that of approaching divine perfection. I said at that time, man will not enter the kingdom of heaven until he resembles the Father. 24. Whoever does not understand my teaching, it is because he has not bothered to study it because it is light to everybody. The time will come when all humanity will rise up saying, I believe in you, in the resurrection to eternal life. 25. Disciples, this atmosphere of peace that you have had and that you have contemplated as a clear sky is truly the bosom of the second Jerusalem, in whose firmament the star will shine that will lead the men who come in search of peace and truth. 26. My spirit delights in speaking to you and so great is my joy in heaven when a repentant sinner comes, as when a just man arrives, because he was always safe, instead he was lost and was found. 27. Not because you are listening to my word do you think you are safe, saying, We were lost, but we have been found and we have heaven for sure. No, you must understand that I have only come to put you on the path that leads to my kingdom and that you will have to strive to never deviate from that path and to advance one step each day until you reach the door, behind which there is the eternal mansion, the cradle and true homeland of the Spirit, where you will all arrive, never to err again and thus enjoy the fruit gathered in the struggle, as well as the reward promised by me to all those who know how to persevere in faith and love. 28. You feel chained to the flesh, the world and pain, but rather than discouraged by it, thinking that they are obstacles to your elevation, I want you to understand that these obstacles are actually the means to test your faith, love and perseverance in the good. 29. I am your savior, your liberator, but understand that if I give you my love to rescue you, you too must give me yours. I will have done my part and you yours, giving you the opportunity to make merits to reach me, aware of your works and knowing who you are coming to and why. 30. What merit would it have for you that I, just out of compassion, separated you from the world in pain and took you to the heavenly regions? Truly I tell you, you would not feel worthy to live in them, nor would you know how to appreciate that life. In a word, you would not even know where you would live. That is why I tell you that it is my will that when you get there, by your merits, because then you will be worthy of everything that surrounds you and everything you have. 31. You know that in each of your steps, in your trials or difficulties, in your yearnings, works and thoughts, I am present, giving you my love, speaking to you, strengthening your will, encouraging your faith, because without my help, who could come close to perfection? 32. Awake, get up, rise into the light and fight. Do you feel like prisoners? Break the jail of your materialism. Are you overwhelmed by pain and misery? Learn to overcome human miseries. 
Do you feel small with the others? In you is a great being developing the spirit through good. I have not created spirits destined to always be small nor to always live in the dark. If in high mansions there are great spirits, it is because they have ascended the path of love. But in the beginning they were also small. 33. See why my spirit rejoices when he talks with those who are little, with those who dwell in darkness or live chained to pain and misery, because I know that with my love your spirit awakens to the light, is flooded with hope and a faith and embrace the ideal of elevation. 34. I want you all happy in peace and living in the light, so that you come to possess everything not only for my love, but also for your merits, because then your satisfaction and happiness will be perfect. 35. To help you in your elevation, my divine ray descends between you to be translated into words of teaching. I tell you as in the second era, I am the way, the truth and the life, and thus I have manifested myself on your path, breaking away from the scum to put you on the path of truth, morality and perfect spirituality. I broke your chains so that you can follow me. 36. Jesus, the Nazarene, was among men in the second era, to leave you a living example of how you should love and serve the Father, and how humanity should be loved. I speak to you like this so that you do not harbor the belief that I have only come to heal you of your sorrows, but also to teach you to do charity to your fellow men. You remember the passages of my life and my passion as a man, so that you understand that the path that I point out to you now, it is the same that Jesus drew for you. It is the same old way, the only one, the eternal one. 37. To many it seems false or impossible that I am communicating through human understanding. To these doubts I answer that at all times and since the beginning of humanity I have communicated through men, through whom I have given the world my orders, my inspirations and my revelations. What now happens is that humanity is materialized, chained to the world and the flesh and imprisoned by its religious fanaticism. 38. I am speaking for everyone because I do not distinguish you, since at first I only sent equal spirits to dwell in the earth. 39. I am the only one who knows the destiny of all, the only one who knows the way that you have traveled and which you have to travel. I am the one who understands your sufferings and your joys. I know that you have gone to find truth and justice. My charity is what the anguished voice perceives of the one who internally asks me for forgiveness for his faults. 40. And as Father I come to attend to every supplication, to collect your tears, to cure your ailments, to make you feel forgiven and absolved of your stains so that you can rebuild your life. 41. I am also the only one who can forgive you the offenses done to me, for you who are my children. 42. You are the seed that I am preparing. If in past times you have even ignored me, I have forgiven, I have now sat you at my table to become my disciples. 43. I see your spirit tired, with the fatigue that it has gathered in the world and that is why it has sought the path that lead to true rest. The deep trace of pain that the sufferings have left in you will be erased as you walk on this path engaging your spirit in the practice of love for your fellow men. In that fight, he never gets tired. If this people reaches the end of their mission on earth in their present existence, they will not return more to him because his abode will forever be the spiritual universe. 44. You are not from this world, but you have come to learn profound lessons, to make merits, to atone guilt, to take steps forward on the path of spiritual perfection, to sow good by giving witness to me. 45. Those who have listened to me in this time should have a greater understanding of their works and their responsibility. Those who have not listened to me may be considered innocent. The former will have to answer for everything they learned, practiced, and stopped doing. 46. If you were to scrutinize yourselves, you would find that you need nothing for you to be able to serve me and to reach the top of the mountain. Whether you serve me or not, you will always have the mission and the gifts. But why do you want gifts and authority if you don't put them into practice? Do not go to imitate the rich miser whose wealth may be very great, but is useless. 47. When the spirit arrives on earth, it comes animated by the best purposes of consecrating its existence to the Father, to please Him in everything, to be useful to His companions.
But once he is imprisoned in matter, tempted and tested in a thousand forms in his journey, weakens, gives in to the impulses of the flesh, gives in to temptations, becomes selfish, and ends up to love oneself above all things, and only for instance gives ear to the consciousness where is written the destiny and promises. 48. My word helps you to remember your spiritual pact and to overcome the temptations and obstacles. No one will be able to say that the path traced by me, he has never left, but you I forgive so that you learn to forgive your brothers. 49. Who are the ones who love me? Truly I tell you, only I know. There are those who love me and do not know it, and there are those who they think they love me and they even brag about it and they don't love me. 50. You will not be left alone after my departure. I will leave the beings who love me among you, because in your hearts there will be bad seed and vanity. In them there will be love, charity, and humility. 51. Not because some love me more, they enjoy greater gifts, no. I am giving everyone the opportunity to awaken to true life to be the instruments of my high designs. 52. I made the call to many at this time and not all came. The rumor of my presence among men reached many places and many hearts, and I can tell you that humanity has been deaf to this call. But when great trials accumulate and the forces of nature launch their voices of justice, humanity will awaken from its long sleep, recognizing that in truth, I was among you. 53. I did not come to save only a certain people or nation. I came for all humanity to teach everyone prayer that communicates them with the Creator in a true spiritual communion. 54. There are those who, when hearing me speak, ask me, Lord, in the future shall we not already raise songs to your divinity? To what I answer you, children, the birds glorify my name with their trills since dawn breaks. If to raise your spirit you need it, do it, if not, there is another hymn that is born of the Spirit and whose notes do not resonate in your ears although its echo vibrates in infinity. Prayer 55. No one flaunts spirituality. Who can say that he is already more spirit than flesh and that he can travel on the waters without sinking? It will not be your matter that rises. It will only be that which, in its recollection, helps the Spirit to cross the distances. 56. My divine spirit that dwells in your heart tells you. 57. Beloved people, if there were a righteous person on earth, by that righteous person the world would be saved. That's why my universal ray descends to illuminate the path traced by the Father to men from the earliest times. That path of morality, of virtue and spirituality that has lifted you up, when out of weakness you have fallen before false deities. 58. Since the first era I have communicated with humanity through men chosen for my charity, they were the prophets, the inspired, the just, the patriarchs, those who made known to you my mandates and my will. See how everyone led you from the beginning on the path of spirituality. They taught you to pray before the Invisible Father and prepare the heart as a sanctuary so that you would have my presence in the corner of your bedroom as well as in a mountain, on a road or on the banks of a river. 59. For moments you have lost yourself along the paths of materialism, turning away from the Father, mistaking the true worship, replacing it with fanaticism and idolatry and in the end many falling into disbelief. 60. But you felt my steps closely at this time. You heard like the distant echo of a bell and you had to go to the mysterious call that was made to you. What did your bodily eyes look at? A few humble enclosures where they congregate my new disciples and some insignificant creatures through whom a sweet word gushed out like an inexhaustible spring, full of tenderness, wisdom, and persuasion. Since then, for many, this word has been the bread of life, water that quenches your thirst and the balm that soothes your pain. 61. Before the prodigy of my presence again among men, the deaf has heard, the blind has seen, the heart hardened has become sensitized, the spirit dead to the life of grace has risen. 62. And men and women have become eager laborers, studious disciples who will later speak of the truth. They will no longer deny me, they will no longer ignore me, nor will they doubt my power again. 63. They will be on the path of the lost like a luminous beacon, 
And so in this time, the spirits will find the path of truth to get one step closer to your Creator. 64. As long as you have a breath of life, seek those who have strayed, raise up your fallen brothers in the fight, heal the spirit, the heart, or the flesh of the sick. Do charity, thus giving testimony of me, no matter if they who received a benefit do not convert to my work. The seed you planted will never die. It will germinate tomorrow or in eternity. 65. Recognize the strength of your gifts that no wise or powerful man could have given you, so that you may truly be the light and the good taste of the world. My peace be with you.